The Lord be with you. We have two things going on this morning. One is, today is, every, every quarter we try to have a service of healing, and today's the day. So you'll have an opportunity to come forward for anointing and prayer for healing. The second thing is, we've been studying the um, Ten Commandments throughout um, Lent, and we're on the fifth commandment, thou shall not murder. And we'll find out what that means for our lives. Our gospel text is one in which a couple of tragedies happened at Jesus' time, and people ask Jesus about it, and he gives an answer showing the fragility of life. So we'll see how the two go hand in hand. We begin our worship, prepare our hearts for worship, through the singing of our entrance hymn, I Heard the Voice of Jesus Say, Please Rise. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Great God, our healer, by your power, the Lord Jesus healed and gave hope. As we gather in his name, look upon us with mercy and bless us with your healing spirit. Bring us comfort in the midst of pain, strength to transform our weakness, and light to illuminate our darkness. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our crucified and risen Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Lord, grant your healing grace to all who are sick, injured, dis or disabled, that they may be made whole. Hear us, O Lord of life. Mend broken relationships and restore those in emotional distress to soundness of mind and serenity of spirit. Hear us, O Lord of life. Restore to wholeness whatever is broken in our lives, in this nation, and in the world. 
Hear us, O Lord of life. Hear us, O Lord of life. Sisters and brothers, I invite you to come and receive a sign of healing and wholeness in the name of the triune God. You may be seated.
Please rise for this blessing. Almighty God, who is a strong tower to all, to whom all things in heaven and on earth bow and obey, be now and evermore your sure defense, and help you to know that the name given to us for health and salvation is the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Share God's peace by greeting those around you. God's peace, Brian. The Lord be with you. Eternal God, your kingdom has broken into our troubled world through the life, death, and resurrection of your Son. Help us to hear your word and obey it and bring your saving love to fruition in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
I do not want you to be unaware, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud, and all passed through the sea, and all were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea, and all ate the same spiritual food, and all drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them, and the rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them, and they were struck down in the wilderness. Now these things occurred as examples for us, so that we might not desire evil as they did. Do not become idolaters as some of them did. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink, and they rose up to play. We must not indulge in sexual immorality as some of them did, and 23,000 fell in a single day. We must not put Christ to the test as some of them did and were destroyed by the serpents. And do not complain as some of them did and were destroyed by the destroyer. These things happen to them to serve as an example and they are written down to instruct us on whom the ends of the ages have come. So if you think you are standing, watch out that you do not fall. No testing has overtaken you that is not common to everyone. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tested beyond your strength. But with the testing, he will provide the way out so that you may be able to endure it. The word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 13th chapter. At that very time, there were some present who told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. Jesus asked them, Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than all other Galileans? No, I tell you. But unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them. Do you think that they were worse offenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you. But unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, See here. For three years I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and, I, and still I find none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? He replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. The Gospel of the Lord. You, you may be seated. I would like to have the children come forward. Good morning. How are you? We're going to talk about fruit today. I can see you're excited about that. There's an apple. Oh, I guess three apples. Bananas. Grapes. And that looks like a grapefruit. And that looks like an orange. Pretty good. Why do you think I brought a picture of fruit? Oh, by the way, the picture is up there. Well, Jesus told a parable about a fig tree that was not growing fruit. What's the sense in having a fig tree if it doesn't grow figs? The idea was to cut it down. 
you know, uh, we're supposed to be, this is a, a, a metaphor for our lives, by the way. We're supposed to be growing, and as we grow, we grow fruit. By the way, I don't know if you've ever seen a fig. That's what a fig looks like. We just bought some figs at the, at the store, and this is what they look like when you eat them. <laughs> they taste like a big raisin with seeds in them. In them. A little bit like a, a big raisin. That's not a bad taste. They're not quite as sweet as raisins. They're good for you. They're good to eat. So, if we're supposed to grow fruit, it's not going to look like that, or like that, or like that. The fruit we grow, what does it look like? Well, when Jesus wants us to grow fruit, every time we do something kind, something good, something honorable, that's fruit. And guess what? Even when we don't do something good and kind and honorable, and maybe even do just the opposite, when we ask for forgiveness, that's fruit. So living a life as one of God's children, trying to faithfully be one of God's children, we bear fruit. Okay? Let us pray. Repeat after me. Gracious God, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you that we belong to you. Help us to bear fruit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can go back to your seats. Somebody after last night's sermon said, Pastor Dan, that was depressing. <laughs> it's the same sermon, so be warned. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thou shalt not murder, you shall not murder, is and actually, when I grew up in the catechism, it said, Thou, you shall not kill. And the actual word in the Hebrew, in the Old Testament, is murder. And we'll talk about that. My first experience, and maybe you've had similar experiences with this commandment, was when I was young. I remember my father giving us boys, my sisters didn't want cap guns, giving us cap guns. But here was the rule. You cannot point it at one another. You cannot point it at anything you wouldn't want to shoot with a real gun. It takes all the fun out of having a cap gun, doesn't it? <laughs> My father had a deep respect for life. I remember uh, one summer when we realized the tremendous elastic power that was found in latex rubber tubing, surgical tubing. I don't know why my father brought home a big spool of it, but we made all kinds of slingshots and we had sophisticated guns that would shoot arrows and dowels and actually penetrate trees with them. Early in the spring, we used those slingshots on birds. And we never were very good. Slingshots are hard to shoot, but we killed a couple. And there's just something about seeing that bird that was once flying, now laying on the ground, 
bed. It gave sort of a rotten feeling. And I noticed it wasn't too many days afterwards, and my parents had 10 acres of ground, five acres of swamp, but a lot of wildlife. But it was amazing. The birds avoided our property from then on. They knew there was something amiss. Don't go near that place. Well, that brings us to that whole question, the sanctity of life. Tolstoy saw this as thou shall not kill does not apply to the murder of one's own kind only, but to all living things. And this commandment was inscribed in the human breast long before it was proclaimed from Sinai. Hmm. Here's the commandment. You shall not murder. What is this or what does this mean? From the small catechism, you are to fear and love God so that we neither endanger nor harm the lives of our neighbors, but instead help and support them in all of life's needs. Our text suggests all of life is fragile. Some came to Jesus and told him about the Galileans that had been killed, slaughtered, and their blood mixed with their sacrifices at the temple. A tremendous sacrilege. Uh, it shows you how terrible and vengeful uh, Pilate was. And what is Jesus' response? In a sense, he says, life is very fragile. Repent. So you don't die without the opportunity to have repented. And then he brings up the Tower of Siloam that collapsed and there were 18 workers on it that were killed. And he said, life is fragile. Be careful. Repent now so that you're ready if something like that happened to you. Life is fragile. So Martin Luther said this in the large catechism. This commandment is violated not only when we do evil, but also when we have the opportunity to do good, to, to do good to our neighbors, but fail to do so. God Almighty calls all persons murderers who do not offer counsel or assistance to those in need. What happens is that people have a very reckless attitude about life. Very reckless and cavalier. So we have this commandment to say, wait a minute. We're beloved children of God, and we as Christians are supposed to see and look for God in all of our relationships. All those lives are very precious to God, so we need to be careful. Martin Luther then goes on and says, if somebody falls into water and is drowning, we need to offer assistance. The temptation nowadays is to take a picture. <laughs> Let's look at, at a few quick examples. I'm going to run through this in a hurry. Anger. We looked at this on Ash Wednesday. Remember, Jesus said, you've heard it said of old, you shall not murder, but I say unto you, uh, and whoever murders is liable to the judgment, but everyone who is angry with his brother is liable to the judgment. Because Jesus is saying that very same emotion we call anger is the emotion that is, the, is at the root of murder. It's looking at another person and having too casual an attitude about the value of their life and their relationship to you. If you don't think anger is dangerous. Listen to People's Pharmacy today at one. They uh, interviewed a, a doctor who had done work 
with people who are angry and found it causes heart disease. War. Of course, war, just war. We, we feel an obligation to be involved in a just war. So many of the wars we're involved with, one doesn't know if they're just or unjust. But a just war. We really thought, did we not, that World War II was a just war. And uh, we base that on just who Adolf Hitler was. For example, some of what Hitler did. He signed a decree that anyone who had been declared insane for five years or longer was to be killed. He killed not only millions of Jews, but countless others. He signed a similar decree deposing, disposing of those who were deformed, then he went after gypsies and homosexuals. Next he sought to eliminate the elderly. Ouch! It's getting close to home! He produced a movie showing lethal doses of air being injected into the veins of older people. And the mo movie was designed to be shown to these German children. And it had a narrator saying, wasn't that the humane thing to do? Showing them a careless, reckless view of life. Martin Luther would call that murder. The Bible calls it murder. War does terrible things to people, on the other hand. In Vietnam, uh, a phenomena in Vietnam that Americans have never seen in a war beforehand and a war afterwards is fragging. Fragging is taking a fragmentation bomb and throwing it at one of your own soldiers. Usually the enlisted men were killing the officers. Why? Because they had been so discouraged, because they were lied to and lied to and lied to. Let's move on. Did I say this was going to be depressing? Industry. Uh, remember when China put um, the same ingredients as antifreeze into baby formula? We have formaldehyde in building materials. Car manufacturers who rather than fix a problem will just settle injuries out of court because it's cheaper. It's a reckless, careless attitude toward life. And we could label it murder. Of course, uh, we have the Black Lives Matter issue, which uh, just screams, let's consider all life. Uh, and the sanctity of all life. Well, let me go back. Uh, guess what? Abortion. I realize uh, this is one of the issues that I say we cannot talk about in Bible studies because it's just too emotional, is it not? And people on uh, both sides of the issue Abortion is wrong. Um, the ELCA made a stand long ago that abortion merely for the means of birth control is wrong. It should not be done. Um, now, we also understand who, when, when women get into these terrible predicaments that would necessitate or would call for one even to struggle with the issue of abortion, it's generally because they're the ones that have to bear the brunt and the cost of bringing a child into this life. Um, so it's a, an issue that I say women need to struggle with that issue. It's too much for me to deal with in a sermon or even, as I say, in a Bible study. So, 
abortion just merely as a means for birth control is murder, we could say. One of the advantages and sometimes curses of the internet, I found a, I, I found out something that on, that some of our famous sports figures and our famous movie stars and whatnot, they have their girlfriends sign an abortion contract. If you ever get pregnant because of our relationship, you must have an abortion. Well, we could say that is murder. One radio host, I've spent $45,000 on abortions. It's cheaper than child support. There's something wrong. It's a casual attitude about life. Not to mention sexuality. Conclusion. Commandment is given. Commandments are for us to understand we cannot have a casual attitude about life. People, especially, those that God loves and has planted His identity in Him, in them. We must cherish, love, care for in every way we can. As Martin Luther says, help our neighbors. Provide for our neighbors. Do what we can to help them. That's what this commandment means. Back in my last parish, one of uh, our teenage girls, she was only 14 at the time, she was riding, had the unfortunate experience of riding in the back seat. She was safe back there of a car after it left high school. Now the high school happened to sit on a corner where there was nothing else except cow pastures all the way around. So the young students, when they left school, they'd hop in their cars and they'd go in all four directions, speeding away, trying to see who would be the first to get to a fast food restaurant. Well, this young woman was in the back seat of a boyfriend's car, and he was, the police estimate, driving 104 miles an hour. Can you imagine that? A reckless disregard for life. He was breaking this fifth commandment. He topped a hill, flew over the hill, and when he landed, he saw ahead a school bus stopped to drop someone off. Behind the school bus was a Volvo station wagon with two sisters in it. He hit the brakes, slid right underneath that Volvo and caused it to turn over. The one sister who was the passenger had her window rolled down because it was a nice day, but did not wear a safety belt. She was knocked out of the car and the car fell on top of her and killed her. The one saving grace about that story was the girl's parents were on news, the news that night. The girl's father was a pastor and he talked about the grace of God and he assured everyone that his daughter, the good news was that his daughter didn't land on cold, hard ground in that accident. She landed in the arms of our Savior. Life, it is sacred. Amen.
Living together in trust and hope, we confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Hearing the call to return to the Lord, let us join the whole people of God in prayer for all who cry out in pain and in hope. Incline your, our ears to you, faithful God. Open us to receive your word. Transform our thoughts into your thoughts and our ways into your ways. Your regard for life into our lives and actions. Lord, in your mercy, Send rain to dry and weary lands, faithful God. Quench the thirst of the earth and every living creature. Lord, in your mercy. Make all governments thirst for your justice. We pray for the peace and dignity for all citizens. Bring citizens and elected officials together to create communities where all people may live in peace. Lord, in your mercy. Fill the plates of the hungry faithful God. Give peace to all who mourn and he healing to all who live with mental illness. Be with all who suffer, especially Harrison James Carroll, Pam Cole, Mel Corlett, Lucy and Lyle Dolly, Dorothy, Jennifer R., Ron Fells, Christy Harrison, Debbie Huff, Alan Malcolm, Chris Marquart, Willis Melgren, Gerald Muller, Denise Newbold, Carly Ott, Jennifer Leon Parker, Margaret, Margaret Schwab, Bennett Shanks, Warren Ott, and Irma Owens. Are there any others? We have thanks for all who mentored each of us in the faith and now celebrate life eternal with you. We remember especially Louise Martin and Harriet Smith. Lord, in your mercy. To you, gracious God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your boundless mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.
Let us pray. God, our provider, you have not fed us with bread alone, but the words of grace and life. Bless us in these your gifts, which we receive from your bounty. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my love, in my blood, given and shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. All is ready. Our Lord invites us. Please come. You may be seated.
The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. O oh God, we thank you for gathering and feeding us as a mother hen embraces her young. Release us now to go on our way in these 40 days, ready to see your work as prayer, ready to fast from complacency, and ready to share with those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We do have a couple of announcements. One is Wednesday, we are still in Lent, so we still have Wednesday evening, Wednesday midweek Lenten worship, noon and 7 p.m. We'll look at the Sixth Commandment and Healthy Families. first one was the day that it was so icy, so if you didn't uh, come and visit with the council members that were um, heading up those committees, we'll be out there today, and uh, we can answer your questions. This is a great way to get involved, get to know people, and um, this is the time when we need everyone to step up because we all wanted this, so let's make this happen and come sign up. We also have teams that you can sign up for, so if you aren't really sure if you want to do the committee thing, we can talk to you about that, but we would love to have everybody get involved. Thanks. Thank you, Cassie. Uh, something that happened a couple of weeks ago that you may not know about, and that is Officer Pearson. Remember that officer that was uh, so brutally shot in the head and had brain damage and lost an eye? He was actually here to be presented with a check. Remember when little Drew had that fundraiser, uh, spearheaded that fundraiser last uh, several months ago. Anyway, Drew uh, did a very good job. $1,400 we raised, and uh, both Officer Pearson and his wife were very moved by our display of generosity and love. Every fourth Sunday, we have a veterans meeting in the fellowship hall, and today is the fourth Sunday, so any veterans that would like to join us for a brief meeting, we have a few business items to discuss. Please join us in the fellowship hall. The fellowship hall will be a busy place because I will be teaching a class in there too. We continue our study of Muslims, what Muslims believe, and we look at um, Muslims and violence. We look at ISIS. We look at um, Muslim finance all today. Receive this benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.
Guided by the gospel, we welcome all to worship, make disciples, hunger for ministry, nurture youth, gather resources for growing ministries, offer healing and care to all in need. Go in peace. Remember the poor.